Today on Locked On Phoenix Suns, we've seen the Suns invest in player development from the front office to the coaching staff to the G League this offseason. So we'll look at three key Suns players and one area where each of them could get even better in 2025. You are Locked On Suns, your daily Phoenix Suns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And we're back. This is Locked On Phoenix Suns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Brendan Clean, your host, a credentialed media member covering the Suns for the past seven seasons and the host of the Just Basketball Show. Welcome in. Thank you for making Locked on Suns, your first listen to kick off your Thursday. We're free and available everywhere, every day. So hit follow or subscribe. Get a new episode in your feed every single Monday through Friday throughout the off season and beyond. And look, honestly, if something crazy happens on a day that's not one of those, I'll have an episode for you there and then as well. So keep it right here. Get locked on to the Phoenix Suns all off season long. Joining us as he does to close out each and every week is Stephen Perjone Garner, a writer over at Bright Side of the Sun podcaster extraordinaire are you a, a phly yet steven are you doing uh where, where else are you are you doing the dnvr stuff they, they're bringing you in for all the teams no nah, not quite yet but uh okay. stay tuned <laughs> colorado Av- avalanche maybe maybe you'll be over there <laughs> phillies coverage who knows it's it's uh it's everywhere but uh we're gonna talk through player development today obviously talked about it throughout the week with different hires the sons of maine brian gregory um mike hopkins obviously forming the g league team here in tempe and it's kind of been the low-key focus i think of a lot of the moves that the suns have made so we're going to translate that over to the player side and talk through some things we we want to see we could see if we were to imagine some of the best players on this team taking another step forward so we'll get into that next today's show guys brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account Buy a ticket for anything and use the code locked on NBA when you do to get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. All right, Steven. So let's start with Devin Booker. If I just open up the, the bank of book from a skill standpoint and you're able to just deposit a little something into that already very full vault, um, what would it be? What would be one little ingredient? He's going to be 28 this upcoming season. So... I don't think he's a finished product. I think most players are not a finished product, but he's still right in that range where we should be seeing him get better and better. So not so much like something he didn't do last year. That feels a little, but something we maybe we've never seen him do, a little thing here and there that could go a long way to make Book an even better player. What do you got for me? I would like to see Book continue to diversify his shot profile individually. And I think there's probably one that's more obvious that a lot of people would like to see more from him. So excluding that particular thing, which I'm sure we'll get to, I would like to see Book spend more time in the post. And I think that's an area of the floor that's going to breed longevity for his career. It's going to be a it's going to be a dynamic of his game where he can operate without having to expend so much energy over the course of the 37, 38, potentially 40 minutes come playoff games. And generally speaking, with the matchups that he gets, it's going to put him in position to draw more fouls. More fouls, more free throw attempts, more points on the board without him overexpending his energy. I think those little things are important. And I think that him adding, operating from the post and from the mid post, whether it be an isolation or a true post up for him, a la his uh, his his idol, who he molded his game most after, and Kobe Bryant. I think those things would really speak to him uh, taking more steps and gaining more composure, gaining even more control over his game. And that's kind of where I would start. I got another one that I would like to speak to, but that's the first one that comes to mind for me. Uh, What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, Book uh, posted up less than one time per game this year, only 3% of his total scoring possession. So it's just... It's a great one because it, it really is something that we've never fully seen him go into. He does have a little bit of, you know, whether it's Kobe or any of the great two guards we've seen where he can turn an ISO or a pick and roll kind of, it, it's a post up for, for 
a second or two, then it's a drive, then it's a fadeaway. You know, he has that stop-start ability, but we don't see him just get it entered, survey the floor, become a passer, become a scorer, become a foul drawer from those spots. And I think, like, I, I mean, you and I talked about it generally when Bud got hired, that that's something he should and has historically brought out of even players that he coaches who weren't that type of player in the past have leaned into that aspect of their game a little bit more, whether it's create a mismatch and punish it, or it's just the initiation of an offensive possession altogether. So we know Book has the size, the strength, the versatility as a scorer to, I think, be in those spots and not panic, you know, Sometimes if guys don't have a handle or the, the the size and physicality to their game or they're not passers enough, then you can really just squelch that out. But I think Book feels like the type of guy that should be able to take that on and, and make it even harder to kind of predict what he'll do and how he'll score when the moment arises. I, uh, I don't have, I don't want to say I don't have one, but I'll throw mine out quickly and then I honestly just want to hear yours because I struggled to come up with something that I've never seen him do. But it was some, it's something that we've rarely seen him do that I'll go to, which is basically can he make transition scoring something that he does on a constant basis that is really, you know, it's in opposing teams' game plans every night. It becomes part of the identity of what the Suns are as a team. And he's not only doing it himself, but having other teammates feed off of it whether that's you know bigs who he's you know sending to go get a quick post up or a lob or it's shooters who he can spray out to because he is just a battering ram at any moment we saw it in the playoffs against the the clippers and the nuggets in 2023 i think toward the the stretch run of the 2022 regular season we saw him really do that but it hasn't always been there and i think if it was It would go a long way for the team, but it would go a long way for him just, again, being a little less predictable and a little more scary to the defenses that are trying to contain him. But what's your uh, what's your last one here? Yeah, real quick on that. That's one of my favorite things about Book when he does look to dictate and transition. First of all, my favorite thing about it is that he's going to go up against a defense that can't load up in the gaps with him. Now he has optionality. Does he want to go straight through the defender's chest? Does he want to go left or does he want to go right? And in that particular context, he's he's one of the best in the league uh, in transition efficiency, whether he's shooting, pull up threes, or he's getting to the cup. And I think my favorite thing within that is how baked into his operation in transition, he really neutralizes and leverages the three-point line better than any other player in the league, in my personal opinion. He gets the ball in transition, whether he's leading the break or he gets a hit-ahead pass, and he's able to play off of hesitations at the three-point line to where naturally – he can hesitate and pull up off of two feet with balance, regardless of your contest, and get up a fair efficiency uh, on, on attempts from there. Or he can obviously play off of the hesitation and get into a crossover or just hesitation, hang dribble, and then get past the defender from there. I love that part of his game. Uh, the other big thing for me is just continuing to evolve and pick and roll. And naturally, when he's got the ball in pick and roll, 85 80% of the time, he's seeing two to the ball. So in that particular method of play, being able to continue to be unpredictable in that, mixing up the cadence at which he's making a pass out of that two to the ball scenario, mixing up stringing out the defense as they try to flatten him out, stretching that towards the sideline, giving him more real estate for his teammates to play in space in four on three, but also not just passing out of that context. We saw him start to experiment with his patience and composure. So one of the things that he uh, mentioned that he learned from Chris Paul when he's uh, stringing out that dribble to pull a big as well as the primary defender away from play, taking that two, maybe three dribbles sometimes and not terminating his dribble, but turning the corner. I think maybe that maybe one of those games in New Orleans this season was where he really, really showed that he had that particular dynamic of his game under great control. That's something I want to see him continue to hit those hit those notes on with consistency. And I think that's something that naturally he'll also benefit from, but even more so the team will and make him almost scheme proof at that point. If he's nailing the transition piece, as well as the composure and pick and roll in the post play. Yeah, it feels like everything we just brought up with him is a byproduct of what I think will happen, which is just 
him reading the game and processing the game at an even higher level. And that's part of why I did want to pick him is because, okay, yeah, he's 28. And like I think we both agree, there's not a whole lot that we've never, ever seen him do, right? You just mentioned the Pelicans game just this season. Obviously, I'm not, I would imagine there's probably some game over the past eight, nine years where he posted up a few times and it looked nice. But it's really about piecing it all together, given that he doesn't necessarily, like a lot of two guards before him, doesn't have, you know, he's not 6'9", he's not John Wall fast, he's not, you know, the greatest shooter of all time, but he has enough of all of it that if the, the, the mental side keeps developing, which it will, it just unlocks the combination and the unpredictability of all of it, which is cool to watch, especially for all of us who have gotten to see him already get so much better. It's just going to keep going. All right, let's talk about Grayson Allen, a guy who we have not seen uh, for quite as long here in the Valley, but just had his career best season. What can he do to get even better in year two in Phoenix? We'll break it down next. First, today's show brought to you by Prize Picks, the best place to play daily fantasy sports. With Prize Picks, you can turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game, watching your favorite sports all summer long. Make a Prize Picks lineup in as few as 60 seconds, turning two to six player stat projections into a lineup that suits you and you're locked in. If you're looking for promos, Prize Picks has you covered. Lowering stat projections each Tuesday, getting your entry fees back each Friday if you lose, and much more. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app for a reason with over 5 million active users each day. So get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the Prize Picks community today. The finals mean more at Prize Picks and so do the star players. Get boosted payouts on select hoop stars that you won't find anywhere else. And when the finals are over, the action doesn't stop in the basketball world at Prize Picks. Young stars like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese looking to make names for themselves alongside greats like Brianna Seward and Asia Wilson. Also helping you win up to 100 times your cash, watching them ball out later in the summer. Download Prize Picks today. Use the code Locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. That's Prize Picks app promo code Locked on NBA to get a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, Stephen. So let's get on to Grayson Allen here, who just shot. I, I mean, what, 90% from three, I think, is a give or take an estimate of uh, the season that this guy just had. And at various times had high assist totals, just a breakout career season in every sense of the word, earned himself a big payday. Frankly, was so good despite some of the fit questions that you and I have talked a ton about that he just he was too good to take off the court. And so I think that's a great starting point. But I honestly expect him to continue to get even better, especially if he can play out his contract here or, or stick stick around for multiple seasons because he's bounced around so much. So what do you feel like is what you want to see from a Sun standpoint or just from Grayson's own development standpoint here? Uh, what is it, year, year seven for him, something like that? What do you want to see? Yeah, I got kind of twofold with Grayson. Uh, answer the first part of the question. What I want to see more from him is to continue to improve his handle. Uh, we saw him more than capable of navigating on his own, creating uh, and self-creation for himself, independent of either of the big three. Also being a fire starter to an extent in multiple stretches uh, when he had his game going. Uh, look at his uh, his attempts at the rim this season, 148 attempts, 20 over 20 attempts more than his, uh, his career pace that he set last season, and he did so on 67%. That speaks to a player that knows how to finish at the basket. Soft touch floaters, the Pinoy step that Anthony Edwards kind of um, kind of took to to the to the spotlight this season in the playoffs with the ability to elude at the basket and finish through contact with either hand. He has the soft touch floaters. He can play through contact at the rim. I would like to see Grayson really get to a point where he's able to operate independent of, like I mentioned, any of the big three because naturally when he's on the floor with those players. Any one of those three is going to be spaced to his left, to his right, and to the backside. That means that more often than not, he's going to be seeing one-on-one -on -one coverage. 
with a player that's not going to be the first or second or third or potentially even the fourth best defender for an opposing team, if he can put that player consistently and compromise and get past them, generate paint touches galore like he showed that he's capable of um, ad nauseum this season, that's something that's going to really be a piece for the Suns to dictate with. And that's independent of any plays that they're running for him or they might be running where he's catching the ball and playing off of advantages created from the big three. Him being a fire starter in and of himself with more consistency this season is a piece that can really push the needle and potentially raise the floor for the Phoenix Suns. And that's the first part of uh, kind of what I would like to speak to on Grayson. Yeah, I mean, I think the ob- an, an obvious one you could say would just be something related to his defense, right? And I thought about that, but frankly, like, I mean, again, he's the same age as Book. He came out of college late, as we all know, so he's 28 also. Physically, he's also pretty big. I mean, he was one of the guys covering him day to day where I was up close and I was like, okay, like, there's not much more muscle we're really going to see his frame add. Like, it it is what it is. So some of the stuff related to, you know, functional strength as a point of attack defender or whatever you might want to see there, it's just probably unlikely, in my opinion. Maybe that was part of where you wanted to go. But so what I, what I kind of looked at more is, and this is a little bit complicated, because I don't think he's necessarily, one, there's very few players who are like this anymore, but two, I don't know if it's necessarily maximizing him to be some kind of like Kyle Korver <laughs> zigzagging through all these bodies and screens and then popping out and, you know, teams don't play that way very often players don't get that opportunity very often especially the way the NBA is so kind of fast and one action based and everything else now so I guess what I would say is like it I want to see if he can be more effective and creative and kind of have a high IQ off the ball, but involved, if that makes sense. So kind of like, I guess, what we see Royce O'Neal, what what his what he's talked up with a lot of the time, where there's a little bit of randomness, a little bit of just sort of creating something out of nothing, but not with the ball like Durant can do, but setting a random screen here, relocating there, quick touch pass here and there, where... Grayson's now proven himself that he's going to be in the rotation, if not starting, on almost every team he'll be on for the remainder of at least this contract, the remainder of his prime. So that's steady. But he was in Memphis and Milwaukee. He was kind of just a spot up, stand in the corner, stand as a spacer, make your open threes off the catch. And that was really it. You know, play a little bit of defense, don't make bad decisions, but that's kind of all you're doing. And there were times early in the season where that's all that he did, but you know, I think about the Minnesota series and all of the more, I guess, complicated or multi-step things that we were hoping we would see them do where they're attacking a certain player on the opposing team or trying to manipulate what the help is doing. It really pays off to have guys who are really smart when they're doing that. Jay Crowder, I think, is another good example of a Suns player we saw do that. Not nearly as good of a shooter as Grayson, but manipulated the defense a little more. So that's kind of what I want to see Grayson Allen develop a little bit more at now that he can be stable and hopefully get some reps with the same group and on the same team and I guess a new coach, but everything else hopefully a little more comfortable for him uh, now here again. Like I said, it is year seven. So that's kind of where my head went. So it's a little granular, but I think it would go a long way. Yeah, I, I'm kind of in the same in, in the same frame of mind as you. Uh, it's kind of looking at defense and offense. We can start with the defensive side. I would like to see the Suns put him in a position, not unlike we talked about with the big three, to where they're going to be a little bit more close to the type of role defensively that you would desire for them. You don't want Grayson to be a primary point of attack defender. That's something he can do. That's not something that he should be consistently doing. I think that if they can put themselves in the in a position to where he's not tasked with guarding, I mean, insert elite guard here in addition to insert elite wing here because you don't want to put Kevin Durant on them for 48 minutes. If you can put him in those positions to where he can be a little bit more, not necessarily off the ball, but not guarding the spotlight, uh, top of the scouting report type players, naturally you're going to allow for him to have more energy to expend on offense. And speaking to the offense as we transition to that side, Get every drop of usage and optimizing him as a chess piece 
as you possibly can. I think I spent the entire season speaking to the value that his small, small screening provided for the Suns. Why not have Grayson get eight seconds on the clock? You cycle through hopefully two separate actions by then and not just one if they get the ball across the half-court line before 18 one, seconds. One sounds nice. One sounds <laughs> nice in the first 16 seconds. Yes. I didn't even see that sometimes. Correct. Correct. So using him as a screener and being able to get into that ghost to screen and pop to space behind the three-point line. Ghosting and then screening under or not ghosting, screening under, stand under, or screening to get the switch to allow for one of the big three to then play within that advantage that comes from that. He showed a great propensity for making the correct 0.5 read in those scenarios, whether he ghosted, got it off the catch, played off the closeout for a shot or a dribble or to pass to keep that advantage, or he also showed the propensity to catch and go downhill on a natural or more natural role after screening and be able to play on a short roll from there getting into his soft touch finishes, the Panoi touch, uh, the short roll passing. He's able to do all of those things. The center question is still something that is likely going to be something going into the regular season next year. So being able to get more out of him as a screener helps to diversify your offense. It adds to that randomness and positive unpredictability that I spoke to that you also alluded to with Jay Crowder and Royce O'Neal. And it's a way yeah. to keep Grayson involved past just the, the, the standing catch, catch and shoot opportunities or having them stash to pass away. I think there's a lot more usage and functionality that they can get out of him. And I think the more they do that, that's another step or another two steps potentially in the right direction that this team could take to being truly whole and optimizing all of their puzzle pieces in one. Yeah, I think those are great examples of more specific examples of, of what I was getting at. And um, I mean, I don't want to overrate it. We don't fully know how any of this stuff works, but obviously Bud and Grayson have a relationship having been together with the Bucks for two years. And Bud said by the time he got to the press conference, which was only a few days after the report came out of him getting hired here, he had already spoken with Grayson and had kind of a laugh of like, you again, like, but obviously in a good way. So even just the familiarity level and the lack of needing to develop a relationship can help to get Grayson integrated into some of that stuff. I think to pull out a couple other examples here on him too, elsewhere in the league like you look at what the Celtics and the Thunder do having their guards start possessions kind of below the free throw line and then use their movement ability from that to actively pull help away from the basket rather than just counting on help to stay stationed in the corner because we want them to you know I think teams are getting smarter and smarter about where they're putting players who have the versatility as shooters and passers and screeners and all the other stuff on top of just their those players ability naturally bending defenses too so hopefully a little bit of a more offensively sophisticated attack here that's another way I think we could see Grayson what Isaiah Joe does what Derek White and Drew Holiday do etc cetera, etc cetera, in those cities so I think that would be a cool little wrinkle that hopefully we can see all right let's close out with Bull Bull a player that I know Suns fans and the NBA world is fascinated with but let's get again specific where could he really improve to actually take another step forward and maybe even be in the playoff rotation next year which he wasn't able to do this past season despite a career season we'll break that down next First, today's show brought to you by the Game Time app, the best place to buy a ticket for any event in any city, wherever you are. Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets as well even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down closer to tip off with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and more. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. I would also include WNBA tickets. I would also include uh, baseball tickets if you're in the mood. Uh, this summer, I saw somebody's doing a an event in Phoenix or some sort of gimmick where they go to every home game in the D-backs, Suns, or Cardinals for the entire 365 days, starting like maybe June 1st, and he was way up in the top. I hope he used game time. Maybe you don't have to sit that far away, but you could take advantage, get in the AC, see a closed roof D-backs game now that the uh, summer is in full swing. Baseball's a great way to spend your time. Maybe you get out to Dallas by... What is it? Friday is the next game. Maybe you're there on Friday. I don't know. Either way, what I love about game time is they show all your prices up front. So yes, there might be some fees and some taxes, of course, but they're not going to trick you. They're going to show it to you right there. You know what you're spending. Prices are low, even with all that included. And 
frankly, better than most places that I've seen. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NBA when you make your first purchase to get fifty twenty dollars off. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Stephen, let's uh, jump through Bull Bull here quickly to close things out. And uh, it's tempting with him to just always talk about the physical side of things because that's, of course, number one with the obvious hill he has to climb whenever he's out on the court to affect the game with his frame and his you know, weight for that frame and, and all that stuff. I am mo- more likely to feel like that's not going to change a whole heck of a lot. We've seen a lot of players his size before. It's really about making it work with that size. So what do you feel like you want to see from Bull given that really he's had two regular seasons now where he's played the majority of games, the vast majority of games, stayed healthy, made an impact, and on this past year was on a winning team deep into the regular season and a little here and there in the playoffs. He's on an upward trajectory. What what do you think comes next if he picks up uh if he comes back to Phoenix and gets a new contract? I would actually like to take that pass that you did to me and boomerang get back to you. Uh, because I have a couple of different directions that I can go with Bull. So I would just like to hear what you gotta say first with him. So frankly, I think where my head goes first is less about him. Similar to some of what you were talking about with Grayson, I think that a coach that's actually invested in deploying him in ways that in, that that maximize him and not just fitting him as a square peg into a round hole, I think even just that mindset change from a coaching staff would really help. And that's also on him to, de- to, to develop those relationships. He's had some uneven relationships, it seems like, in a lot of his stops. So that's sort of in addition to the weight and everything else and the strength, that's kind of where my head goes. But I guess from his standpoint, individually on a more micro level, I think... A big thing for him would be um, a let it fly mentality with his three point shot, really repping that, getting comfortable taking it from a variety of you know spots on the court, maybe a little more off of motion if he could be somebody that you run off screens a little bit more. I think developing that perimeter game where he's not hesitating, he's channeling the versatility into more this is your role. And I think to me, that's probably the most likely role is a higher volume shooter. Um, And then I also think rebounding to me, like him, yes, the strength and everything else, like he he can get boxed out, but we've seen him just reach over other players and, and get rebounds. I feel like, again, some of that is where is he on the floor? It's hard to get an offensive rebound if I'm telling you to shoot threes. I get that. But um, being a more, you know, I don't, he's not going to play a lot of minutes, whatever, but get five rebounds a game. You know, if you're playing 15 to 20 minutes, get five rebounds a game and channel. Okay. If you get an offensive rebound, you use your height to finish. If you get a defensive rebound, you have the, you know, the reading of the floor and the passing ability, like get an outlet pass and go. I think it's about kind of just connecting the obvious skill that he has with a clear role of how are you getting to impact the game as an interior scorer, as a three-point shooter, as a passer, as a defender. And I think those little tweaks might might go there. It's hard because he can do everything, but also he's limited in a lot of ways. He's a, I mean, I get why people are intrigued by him for sure. Yeah, he's he's very much a unique basketball player. Uh, in any era of basketball that you want to look at him uh, lens-wise, he's very, very unique. I think uh, I, I love everything that you said about, about ball. And uh, kind of to your point, just looking at his three-point shooting, uh, the discrepancy, uh, he had 33 attempts that came from the corner this season, and he shot those at basically 40%. And he ventured past uh, past the three threes from the corner, looking above the break, 47.3% on 19 attempts above the break. That screams that a player that screams a player to take more than just the attempts that he did on average and do it more consistently with more consistency, like you said. Uh, I just wanted to provide the context of uh, yeah. efficiency just for people to understand just how, I mean, honestly, that's a pro- 47% is prolific, regardless of the amount of attempts. 
So seeing him tap more into that with confidence and not hesitate like you talked about would be important. I enjoyed his ability to discern between when he wants to catch and shoot and when he wants to catch and drive past the closeout or a half closeout. If he can start garnering more of those closeouts to where players are taking even just another step closer to the three-point line when the ball rotates to him, that's going to create just so much chaos for him because he's just so abundantly skilled. I think I would love to see that in his game. I'm thinking about a, an example against the Lakers late in the season where LeBron didn't want to go out to the corner the first couple of catches for Bowl. He dodged him in his eye two times from the corner. Now he finally ventures off and closes out from a half closeout to a full closeout. Bowl drives past him, either goes to the basket, gets fouled, finishes, or keeps an advantage into a, a positive re result for the Suns. Those are the type of scenarios where he could be perfectly positioned, not unlike Grayson Allen when he's off the ball, to play in those .5 decision-making position, uh, positions on the floor, not unlike Mikael Bridges was for Suns fans that are trying to glean a better example of how a player plays off of the advantages created from others. The other big thing for me with Bowl, kind of similar to Grayson, but more even more to a physicality extent with him, I think he can get a lot more usage being a screener and the issue with Bowl is because of his uh, more slender frame, when he sets screens, he's more so screening an area or a space that's forcing whoever it is on ball to navigate. And naturally, mm -hmm. if you're space screening and it's Drew Holiday, Marcus Smart, Alex Caruso on the ball, they're just going to navigate right through that space and there's going to be no advantage created more often than not. You want to be able to free your guards up to at least get leverage shoulder to shoulder getting downhill. From there, it's their job to, you know, execute within that advantage. If he can get to where he's setting screens more effectively, he doesn't set – he's not going to be setting 20, 25 screens a game like Nurkic was last season. So on the five or six attempts that he is, if they're able to have a, a 1.5 points per possession when he's screening, that's something that can really change a lot, give him opportunity to play more, showcase his effectiveness – but also put him in a position because I think somewhere he really excelled this season was on a rare occasion where he did set a screen if he needed to. The big three are getting two to the ball. So naturally, he's being helped off of. And now if he's in a position to where he can play downhill in a four and three advantage, if it's a big that's guarding him, that's removing rim protection, he can finish over any other player on the floor for one. For two, He's shown great ability to be able to process the second side of a defense, make that one dribble or maybe that extra dribble to collapse the defense in the paint, and then dish it out to the opposite 45, the corner, or hit that strong side corner if they try to sink in from the strong side. And he's also, like I talked about, able to finish with soft touch ability as well. I think that's yeah. a, spe a specific context of offense that they can also get more of out of him. It will start to take steps in the right direction even more if he does start nailing screens better. I would expect for Bud, if he's brought back, to automatically look at finding a way to use Bull not just as a piece that's glamorizing for fans, but a piece that'll be effective. And I think that naturally is there's a marriage there in functionality and usage with him as well. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just uh, overly optimistic, but I've kind of been operating with the assumption that it, there's a pretty good shot he, he's back here next year just because of the familiarity. If I'm mm -hmm. him... I don't think there's probably a massively bigger offer. Somebody out there may throw him, you know, a, a mini mid-level as it's called or something just to pry him away from Phoenix because they know that's all that needs to be given to get him. But at the same time, like, you know, easy for me to say somebody should leave money on the table. But when you have familiarity with star players, you have a potential role on a really, really good team. And you he clearly has a relationship with Kevin Durant. They've been working out together again this summer. I don't know. I, I feel like all that should add up to go a pretty long way, but we'll obviously see. People have been talking about Nurk as the Brooke Lopez. What if he could turn into what Brooke did under Bud? And I feel like Bull is somebody that I could see growing a little bit in similar ways that we saw Lopez do in Milwaukee. Not obviously um, with He's a great post defender. He has a little bit of strength to absorb at the, as a rim protector, and he has more of an ability to set solid physical screens. He's going to play more minutes. I get it. They're not one-to-one, -one, but I think it kind of speaks to maybe not fully off movement and like he's, again, like Kyle Korver or Grayson Allen or something, but off movement of pick and pop is a similar way to leverage his shooting ability and the footwork and the comfort in those spots, the higher volume of above the break threes, 19 is not a lot that you mentioned. Those are other ways where I think 
you can really start to see him be utilized and for his skill to develop and comfort level to develop. So I hope they bring him back, I guess, if that's not obvious, because uh, I said I think they will. But because there's so much left, he's only 24, by far the youngest guy we've talked about, the least experienced guy we've talked about. I think the Suns would be smart to do everything they can, and uh, I would I would like to watch it. Uh, so we'll see. But that'll wrap us up for the day. Hopefully you enjoyed the deep dive on skill development and everything else for some of the Sun star players will have more news as the draft nears and free agency. Whenever the finals are done, free agency with teams negotiating with their players is going to start. So who knows? By next week, that could have already started, depending on how this final series goes. So that to look forward to, of course, as well. Hit follow, subscribe to get all those shows and more throughout the offseason. Read Steven's work at Brightside of the Sun. Listen to him at PHNX. And we'll catch you guys next time.